Welcome to the third hall at Manor Park Classics. Again, we've got so many lots in this Saturday the 14th of May auction. We're trying to split them up so you can see. This is, again, a car you won't see very often at auction in this kind of condition, if at all. This is a 1999 Vauxhall Tigra. Used to be, let's be honest, a little bit naff, but when you see them now, suddenly they become incredibly cool, haven't they? It used to be a car for the ladies. Now I think as a man, even I'd be quite happy to drive this. This is done. 32,000 miles, it's a special edition checkers model, one family owner from new, full book pack, just literally as it rolled off the showroom floor, the thing is mint, split mint. And this would be, let me have a look at the screen for you. We're estimating this car at just three and a half to four and a half grand. So if you really do want a showroom fresh Tigra, if you want that experience of driving off the showroom floor in 1999 with your fresh new Tigra checkers edition, that's it, that's a really nice car that. Now this is a project, we've got quite a few projects, obviously lots of lovely cars that need nothing, just polishing petrol, but loads of cars, if you fancy adding some value yourself or having a bit of a project, something fun for weekends, I think this one, I think lot 86 certainly falls into that category. This is a 71 Fiat 500L, I've done one of these on the show, I can tell you how much work is involved in getting a shell to this condition, and the nice thing is, somebody's done the hard work for you. It's a restored shell and all the parts to put a car together, it's basically, it's a giant Tamiya kit, isn't it? You're gonna buy this, put it together over the course of several weekends. Obviously needs painting. Appears to be a rust-free body shell. I've had a good look. There's not a lot to do on this at all. Good panel fit. It's got a rollback roof, which is the proper pressing as well. Not an aftermarket cut in. And this is your chance to buy one of these and do the work yourself and add the value. You can get these up to 25 grand quite easily. This is going to be two and a half to three and a half for that kit of parts. You couldn't do the shell for that. So there you go. That's a great way to start a project. Disappear into the garage for many weeks. This I love, not least of all because of the way it's been presented. This is a 1951 Bentley Mark VI saloon. Just had comprehensive body and mechanical restoration in the 1980s and then sat, basically. The poor thing has sat, but it runs, requires recommissioning. It's got its original registration number. It's been in the current ownership since 1997. It's got this lovely factory sliding roof in metal as well. It's got working trafficators, Original operating radio, so you could just go through this over a few days or send it to a specialist, have the car recommissioned. I think this paint, save for a few scratches, will come up rather nicely as well. And again, a lovely way to travel for an inexpensive amount for what it is. We're estimating this at somewhere between 10 and 14, and that probably when it's done could be easily be a 30, 40,000 pound car. And there's not massive amounts to spend on it. So another Bentley T1 for you, we've got two in this sale. This is a 1969 Bentley T1. As I say, I always think they're cooler and rarer than the Silver Shadow. So you've got the same basic shell, but you've got a much nicer grill. This has done 84,000 miles. It is, of course, an automatic, as they all are. Four former keepers, it's been in current ownership since 1980. So 42 years with the current owner. It does need a full restoration. This is a car for you to cherish, add value to, and do some work. But it does seem to be all there. I think that's the thing we can say about this one. It's got all the bits there. It's got the original RAC pack. It's got the Lucas fog lights. It's got the companion mirrors in the back as well. And it's got the original sales and service book. It will be an inexpensive car, this one. It's going to be up for no reserve. So there you go. Come and bid, you set the price. But just cool. I would restore that in the factory colors. It's a particularly nice color combination, that one. And yeah. Just a lot of fun. A lot of expense to be had, but I think you can make that into a really nice car. This one now, everybody knows Mark 1 Scirocco, values are just going stratospheric. It's quite hard to find a car that's restored, that's affordable. This one does need quite a bit of metal here and there. You are gonna need to have either a mate that owns a body shop to make a nice car out of this or be a bit handy with the world yourself. But it's a good, solid project. It's done 150,000 miles, it's a manual car. Original interior, which is decent. The engine's very good and the car does run and drive. It's got this desirable short reg that comes with it as well. It's got MOTs going all the way back to 1987. So don't underestimate, there is some work to do on this. It probably looks good on the camera, but you are gonna have to be welding extensively. But the prices of these just goes up and up and up and up. You could do something really cool, straight restoration with this. You could do a color change. You could do a bird cup car, just exceptional. I would take the roof out, do a roof scheme replacement. Effortlessly cool, that thing. Right, the Ford E83W van, it's a 1951 this one. Don't worry about the wings, we're not going for the hot rod look. All of the bits to finish this car are in the back of the van. So this is 78,000 miles, it's manual, it's MOT exempt of course. All the parts are complete with it, it's got the original buff logbook. It won a show winner at Tatton Park in 2019. 
don't know what class it was in. So obviously either it's had a tough three years or um, it's a solid van. That's what we can say about that one. It's got the workshop manual and spares list. And I think it's got something about it. If you're looking for a cool promotional car for your business or something a bit different, it's actually a really decent sized van. It's got a huge load area. Come and have a look at it. Look how big this is at the back. It's a big van. So a lot of these period commercials don't have a huge amount of luggage space and cargo room. This one does, so I think you could restore this. It's not going to need an awful lot. It's actually been rubbed down. What makes it look quite matte is the fact it's obviously had decent bodywork and someone's going for a second stint and they've just lost interest. So you're three years out from this being a show winner because the bodywork is actually really straight. A little bit of filling the door, look. A little skim there. You can make something very cool in that. And the reserve price, my friends, six and a half to eight and a half. So again, not huge amounts of money for what could be a 30 grand van. And on to the 1950 Jowett Bradford utility van. This is from the estate of the renowned collector, Chris Sugden Smith. He's got a lot of cool cars that we're going to be selling on his behalf. Only done 49,000 miles, it's got a flat twin. I don't know if you've ever heard one of these, they're really cool, 907cc engine. It's a matching numbers vehicle. Appears to be completely original, I can vouch for that. And it does need a full hit, basically. You can either run it with this lovely patina, or you're gonna have to go through and sort it out. Obviously, a little bit of bodywork to do, a little bit of interior work to do. And again, price-wise, what can I tell you on that one? No reserve. We do like a no reserve car because anything goes, anything can happen. And again, another one from the same estate, 1936 Jowett van. This has done 71,000 miles. It's a manual car, another flat twin 907. And it's a 1936 number from Taunton, Somerset. Very cool original number. Do make sure that you keep them on if you do buy them because a lot of people take them off and sell them. And you must never do that. Yeah, it looks like it's had a life inside, shall we say. Again, don't underestimate, if you want this to be a nice vehicle, you've got a lot of money to spend, but what a lovely, solid basis for restoration and recommissioning. This could be a really nice one. And again, no reserve. Takes us on to lot 33, which is this rather lovely Jowett Bradford again. He obviously loved his Jowett Bradfords. This is really quite nice condition, this one. You could just drive this one as is. This one's done 4,000 miles, it's manual, it's lovely patina. Drew Pritchard levels of patina on this one. Loads of parts with it as well, great interior. This is one to just jump in and use. So it's a little bit more money, obviously. Very solid, very well presented. Driven here, eight and a half to ten grand. It's got this lovely period sign writing on as well. Have a look at this, Alec. It's just so cool. Lovely interior, lovely patina in there. The leather is adorable. Let me have a look in that. Go on. Have a look in there. And then all this proper sign writing. No vinyl here. All done by hand. Very, very nice thing, that. Now this, you know what this is, 1982 Land Rover, 88. It's got starts on the button, Roger's notes here, and it's a seven-seater. So if you've got a larger family and you don't want to give up the classic car lifestyle and you like a little bit of off-roading, this is very cool. It's got the roof on it as well. Fitted with freewheeling hubs and a two and a half litre engine. It's got new parabolic springs, which they're expensive. They're about 800 quid to do those. Got first registered to the West Yorkshire County Council and equipped with hard top tailgate, defender style door mirrors and seven seats. Bonnet spare, which I always think looks really cool on these. Just a lovely, lovely thing. That is, got great paint as well. It's kind of slightly rough and ready. You can see it's had a colour change at some point. No reserve. So come and get yourself a bargain. I love that. I love an older Landy. And I think this, to me, this is the peak shape, pre-Defender, last of the Land Rovers, with a nice door swage. That's the one for me. We have had so much, I put this on my Twitter, and I've had so much interest in this car because it's quirky and weird and wonderful. So I might do a little bit longer on this one. 2003 Rover 75 long wheelbase Connoisseur SE. No reserve, that's the first thing. What a lot of fun. So they've literally taken a Rover, this is factory built car, don't forget, chopped it about here, and they've put an extra 20 centimetres in the middle. So what you get in the back, come around the back here, L. You get this amazing amount of legroom. This is like a Poundland Maybach, this is. And for someone like me, that likes to buy quirky cars on a budget. So first of all, let's talk about legroom. Let's talk about legroom. And of course, you've got your curtains in here. You've got your lights at the top. These were built ministerially. The idea was Rover was trying to get a ministerial contract to build these. They only made 100. You might buy that for two or three grand. It's absolutely cool. You can run it as a Rover 75, so it's not going to be much to do. Just very cool. Turn up at a car show. I would paint it all black. I think it would look utterly badass. Very cool, very rare thing. 
I doubt you'll see another one at auction and it will not be a lot of money. As I say, it'll be two or three grand. I think you'll have an enormous amount of fun. And if you've got very large teenage children, they'll fit in the back. Do you want to buy the last Bentley Turbo R long wheelbase that they ever made? Of course you do, because every collector knows the one that you always want from any production run is the very first one or the very last one. This car, if you want a long wheelbase Bentley, this is it. This is the last one they made, the last Turbo R. It's on 80,000 miles. It's got fantastic MOT history, 21 MOT certificates it's got, two service books, 23 stamps. It's probably one of the best colours they ever did. An authenticated email from Bentley confirming this was the last one off the line. So if you want an end of an era, and I do think these are a particularly handsome car, and again, the long wheelbase spec is the one you want, because of course your driver would drive you and you'd sit in the back. And if you're a tall, long-legged lad like me, that's what, look at that, you see. I don't really fit in a normal Bentley, but I really fit in these. And these aren't hugely expensive for what they are. They're obviously horrendously expensive when they were new. But when you buy them at this kind of age, and 80,000 miles is a great mileage because it shows it's been used a lot, but not so much. It's going to need loads of money spending on it. And this is going to be, look, estimated 10 to 14 grand. 10 to 14 grand to buy the end of a line. I just think that's a bit of a bargain. Moving on to... Right, another Bentley, bright red, you can't miss this one in the car park. This one is a 1989 Turbo R, normal wheelbase this one, original spec, 19 stamps in the service book, it's on 102,000 miles. And again guys, don't be put off by a well-serviced Bentley with a bit of mileage, they're more than capable of doing it. And what you will buy is a car that's a bit more price range because the mileage does that, with a great history. And actually these cars are better if they're used. The worst thing they can do is sit. So these cars have actually been used, they've had a life, they've been maintained and they'll continue to go for years to come. It's had the current owner since 2010 to 12 years in current ownerships, 19 stamps in the book, MOTs going back to 92, invoices going back to 2008, really great condition, correct turbo speed tires as well. All the electrics work, it's got air con, it's got clarion stereo, and it had loads of work in 2014, including rear dampers, new front brakes, CV joints, four grand's worth of work basically. So that's a nice one to have, enjoy and use. That's the most important thing. Sticking with the Bentleys, the Bentley 8. This is an interesting one. So I entered from a deceased estate, this one. Running and driving without any mechanical issues. It's done 74,000. It's got Pirellis. The aircon blows ice cold. We've checked that as well. Private number plate stays with it. It's got lambs all over mats, the roof badges. It's only done 1,000 miles between 2006 and 2018. So it's been used very sparingly. One imagines it's been laid up. Tiny bit of micro blistering on the bonnet. Worth getting that sorted, worth having the bonnet painted, I think. The interior, as you'd expect, with a relatively low mileage car, is like new. Loads of room, just got that amazing smell. I wish you could smell this. Leather and lamb's wool. Just, you'd feel very special every time you drove that car. That one will not be a huge amount of money. I personally love the colour. I say budget to paint the bonnet, you'd have a nice car. We've got that up at three and a half to four and a half. Just what a cheap smoker. I absolutely love it. Moving on to Another great British luxury car. Jaguar XJ, 1975, 3.4, only four keepers, only 59,000 miles. To me, one of the most handsome Jaguars ever made. One of the best shapes they ever did. It's got these very funky period wind deflectors on. Like I say, four former keepers, original spec interior. It's got heated rear window, which was the thing back then, believe me. Original Clarion Jaguar radio and MOTs going back to 79. It's had all the hoses changed, new thermostat and water pump in 2019. The chrome is mint. And it's just a nicely history car in a very cool, very period, very funky colour combination. And I just think you'd look quite a Bobby Dazzler driving that. Little touch of the, uh, the wag, the 1970s wag, that one. Got that estimated at five to seven. That just screams like a lot of car for the money to me. And don't they look good? And of course, this is what set the tone for all Jaguar styling for years to come, because you can see, can't you? Look at the headlights, look at the swage, look at the sculpts. As we come into this, the later XJ6, the three liter V6 SE, 2003, no reserve, two former keepers this car, and it's had 12,000 pounds spent on it in the last decade. It's got, what else has it got? New thermostat's just been fitted, diagnostics to the sum of 525 pounds, just been spent in March. Highly spec from the factories of parking centres, tilt and glide sunroof, 16-way front seats, and 12 stamps in the service book. So that is going to be 
super cheap limo, really. If you want to smoke around looking like Lord of the Manor, you or lady, to be fair, no reserve. Oh, the two most fatal words in any car collector's lexicon, offered with no reserve. There you go. Love it. Great colour choice and immaculate grey leather. I could see you in that. I could see you in that. I think one of the most beautiful Jaguars. Everybody raved about the E-Tape. I prefer the XJS. Particularly this, it's a four litre, so of course it's the easier engine to look after. 134,000 miles, two previous keepers. It's a 1994. It's had the current owner since 2005. I love the colour, flamenco red. The leather is exceptionally good. Someone spent some money keeping that nice. Have a look in there, El. Because normally on a lighter beige interior on a Jag, they really go. And that one hasn't. Nine stamps in the book, an original book pack. You could probably spend a little bit of time and money just correcting the paint. The paint's very nice, but tiny bit swirly. I think you spent three, four hundred quid doing paint correction on that. You would have a lovely car. And it's got the later facelift IAD back end as well, which I think looks really nice on these. That's a lovely car. Let's have a look at, let's have a look at the reserve on that. We are saying on this lot 88, come on, four to five grand. Four to five grand. You spend 500 quid on that, you would have an exceptional motor car and you would feel very special, very special driving there. That's one to have a bid on, I think. Who doesn't love a Rover ST1? This one is particularly nice. It's had one family owner from new. The car has only done 19,000 miles. And when you look around, you can see that. Let's be honest, these old BL products from this period don't wear massive mileage well, and this hasn't had any. Lovely color, it's basically an original specification. It's got metallic paint, it's an automatic. It's got loads of matching dealer stickers, plates, it's got lovely Hankook tires on it. It's just had a big service in 2021. If you're looking to restore one of these, my advice would be, why bother? Get this one, low mileage, it needs nothing. You can just enjoy it, you can just have some fun. The two litre engine is gonna pull all day. We've got this one estimated at just three and a half to four and a half. So it's not the big sexy V8, but when you're cruising along, you wouldn't care. It'll do more to the gallon, it'll be just as much fun and you can only drive at 70 mile an hour anyway. So that would be one for me, especially at that kind of estimate. We know we've got lots of Ford enthusiasts that come to our auctions, and this is a super rarity. 1989 Ford Sierra 2.9 gear, 4x4 estate with 46,000 miles on. I can't imagine there's a lot of those for sale in the UK this year, never mind this week. It's a cool car, isn't it? So it's got original owner's handbook, original interior, three keys with the car. Gear 4x4 is rocking horse poo. They never come up because they've all rotted, they've all gone on the arches, they've disappeared. There weren't that many people ordered it in period anyway, because that was a very expensive car. To order the estate with gear and 4x4 was an awful lot of money. If you're a true Ford collector, this is one that you want. And also, it's just a very practical car, because you've got the estate, you've got five seats, you've got the 4x4 practicality, so you can drive it throughout the winter as well. Very, very cool thing. We'll have a look at the estimates on that one. Seven to eight grand. It's cheap fast forward, isn't it? You think if that was XR4i or any other badged Ford, that it would be well into five figures. So I think that is a cool car, very cool car. And I love the RS7 spokes on that as well. Can we talk about this next car? This is one of my favorites. Marina Coupe. The Marina gets a lot of bad press, completely unfairly, because I think they're very cool little cars. And I think the Coupe in particular is one of the more handsome offerings from the time. Just have a look at the proportions of this. This lovely roof line, the two door, it's got an Australia wheel, someone's fitted some very cool Triumph Dolomite wheels, which of course, as we all know, car nerds, first production car alloy wheel to be fitted. What so we can say, 1975, 1.3, only 59 of these left, guys. If you want a rare car to turn up at a car show, this is definitely it. Very rare, very good looking, love the dolly wheels. It's got the Australia wheel inside. The interior is very cool, I have to say. Come and have a look at this, Al, because the interior is in good nick. You don't need to spend any money here. The paint, if I'm honest, is a little bit, these a little bit. It's had some repairs. It could probably do with a really good wet, flat and polish and you could probably make quite a nice car. I don't think it deserves a respray. It's not that bad, but I just think it wants a little tickle in the tidy. You'd maybe do something with the carpet, just get them a bit fitting a bit better around the door seal. But 59 Marina Coupes left. I think exceptionally cool. It's sitting properly. It's on the right wheels. You turn up a retro rise gathering in this, Instant kudos. I just think it's a very cool car for not a lot of money. I'm going to tell you how much money. Three and a half to four grand. Three and a half to four grand. That's not even the, de the deposit on a PCP deal, is it, on a new car? So don't do that. Put four grand into this instead. It'll be much better money. 
the Austin All Agro. Love them or hate them, I personally love them. I think they're an absolute genius, I've had two. And this is really nice, my granddad always had an Allegro. That was his go-to car in the early 80s. This is an 81, 1.3L, 25,000 miles. We do like finding you these rare BL bits, because we know you love them. And I'm sure you've all been reading the Classic Car Magazine, some of the highest percentage increases in the Classic Car Market at the moment are BL cars. So they're not huge amounts of money to buy, but they're going up and up and up. And why is that? Because we all remember them. Our granddads had them, our dads had them, we had them as our first cars. So there's a huge affection for British Leyland products in the classic car marketplace. And it's making them very good buys because again, usable classic, great spares, great owners club for these. This one's had two previous owners, got the book pack. The previous owner was a member of the Allegro owners club. So I'm sure if you ask them nicely, they'll introduce you. Loads of history, original sales, in, original sales invoice even. And just a nice interior, it's worn very well this car. God, this takes me back. This is exactly the spec my granddad had. So I like that car. That will only be a few thousand. And you could drive to Haggerty's Festival at the Unexceptional in that, and you'll be greeted like a god. So I would have a cheeky bid on that one. Pocket money fun, that one. Carrying on. This is really pretty, isn't it? This is very lovely. Nostin. Do that again. <laughs> Nostin. <laughs> Here we go. This is very pretty, isn't it? 1951, Austin A40 Devon. Starts on the button completely ready to go. I think it couldn't be in a more attractive color for me, couldn't be in more perfect condition for me. It's almost concourse, but it's that lovely, usable, presentable perfection that isn't, that you'd be scared to use it. You'd be happy to take this out, polish it on a Sunday morning, take it to a car show. It's the original spec interior. It's only done 39,000 miles, and that looks genuine, we think, on that one. It's just had engine work for 360 quid. I'll do that again, because it's not. It's just had engine work to the tune of 552 quid. It's just had four new tires and tubes. Last year, 700 quid. Great chrome, great bodywork, just utterly charming and beautiful and locked as well. Elliot, come and have a look in here, look. You need to buy this car for the dashboard alone. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You feel very opulent in there. And again, all these lovely trims and surrounds. They made cars very differently then. And they do feel a little bit more special inside. There's a more sense of occasion getting into a 50s car, and that's particularly pleasant. But we're gonna go pre-war now, keeping it Austin, but going the other side of the wall. Very attractive little 1936 Austin 10.4 Sherborne. Just had a retrim, and that's gorgeous how they've done that. Very in keeping. UK market home car, running and driving. It's got the opening screen, you can see, as well. It's got King of the Road Lucas headlamps. They weren't standard, but they're a fantastic upgrade. And it, doesn't it look good? And these cars, to me, represent something of a bargain at the moment. We've got this one listed at three and a half to four and a half. Pre-war stuff like this, the kind of relatively common stuff, they're not fetching enormous amounts of money. So if you're looking for a fun car that's great character, easy to maintain, lots of fun to drive. And this thing would bowl along at 50, 60, so you're not gonna get stuck in traffic. But look inside, look at this retrim where someone has spent so much money having these seats done. It's absolutely beautiful, incredibly tasteful, sort of burgundy claret interior with the original wood dash. And you can just imagine yourself, can't you? Just tootling along in the summer to a car show with your family in the back, picnic in the boot. It doesn't get much better than that for four or five grand. Cheap car. Cheap car, my friends. Another Austin, this is the Austin section. A30, of course, we all know how cool A30s are. Goodwood Revival has made this shape of car, the Austin A30 and the Austin A35, incredibly cool as a race car. You could have a very nicely presented road car. This is a 53, supplied new in South Africa and recently imported. What does that mean, my friends? That means exceptional bodywork. It means there's no rust, there's no rot. It's a really nice car. It's from 14,000, it presents beautifully. Drives very well, we've spun it around the block and it's mega. And again, it won't be an expensive car. We've got this one up, 2,800 quid, 3,200 quid. Dare I say, somebody might buy this and create a revival racer out of this because you would not get a better shell. It's a really nice color and it's a wonderful starter classic. If you're looking for a 50s or 60s starter classic, these are brilliant because you can fix them with a piece of string and a bent spoon. They drive really well, my mum used to have one of these and everybody loves them. They've got that kind of cute charm factor, particularly in this baby blue. That's a cheap car, three grand. Almost guarantee someone's gonna buy that, some motorsport prep outfit, and you'll be seeing that at Revival, tanking round next year at great speed. The Triumph Vitesse, not the Herald. And all the nerds know that the way you tell the difference, obviously the Vitesse, 
has the much sexier twin lights on the front and the bigger engine, the six-cylinder engine. This is a 1964 car presented in period spec. It's not perfect, but what it is is beautifully patinated. There's a couple of very, very light rust bubbles on the front, but the bodywork is very good, very, very good. 24,000 miles, good chrome. It's got a nice alloy rocker box on the front. Very, very nice interior. And if you haven't driven one of these, I would heartily recommend it because it's everything that's wonderful about the Herald, just a much nicer noise and a much better specification. This one is up for four to six grand. <laughs> what? And it's kind of like the period sports car at the time, particularly like the colorways. Someone's got a hat tip to Lotus Cortina here, haven't they? So you've got all of that fun, six cylinder soundtrack, great sports wheel, really nice interior, wonderful colorways. And again, a really presentable but not perfect car that you'll just enjoy using every day and not worry about. That to me is a bit of a bargain. I do love that. Huge amounts of fun to be had. Moving on to one for the 90s kids. When did you last see a Ford Probe in any condition at all? A bit like the Tiger we've also got in the sale. This one is that thing we all want. The little old boy, he's had this from new 24,000 miles. Now this was a very controversial car when it came out because everybody wanted Ford to make another Capri and they didn't of course, they partnered with Mazda and created this instead. But I think actually kind of fast forwarding to today, these have gone through the point where they were worth nothing and nobody wanted them. All the rusty ones have disappeared. There are just a very few cherished number of these cars left and this is one of them. Owned by the vendor for 23 years, he has kept all 22 MOT certificates. It's completely original. There's a couple of very, very tiny imperfections in the paint. It's got brand new Continental tyres, all the books. It's got the original leather interior. And for a 16 valve car that you just never see him come up, if you want a little glimpse into 90s life, 1997, it is like travelling back in time. I remember sitting in a Ford showroom in the 90s looking at that interior, thinking how wacky it looked. And actually, it's aged quite well, hasn't it? It's almost come back round into coolness. So that will be an interesting car. I've been very keen to see how much this goes for because they're quite hard cars to value because they never come up for sale. We've got this one down at a mere three and a half to four and a half grand. And I just think if you want a Ford Probe, they need nothing to do. And I love the fact it's got its period and original three spoke wheels on. That's a very cool car. What can I tell you about this car? I can tell you a lot about this car because I know this car very well. This is owned by my good friend, James Clark. And James is a very senior bod at Toyota. And I actually went to fetch this car. When he bought this car, I went and fetched it with him. So I know everything about this car. It only has four former keepers. It's mechanically overhauled. And this is what I must stress on this car. If you're looking to buy a Reliance Scimitar, there are loads of problems that go wrong on these, not least of all things like the heater matrix, loads of mechanical maladies. What James has done, he's that rare owner that we all want to buy a car from in the fact that he spent all his money where you can't see it. Basically, he went through mechanically and made everything perfect. He didn't spend money sorting the paintwork out. He went through and did every expensive, awkward, horrible job that all Scimitars need, but nobody ever does. Everyone does the paintwork first and then does the underneath. James did it backwards. So you have got a car here, the guys have all driven it, it's the best driving scimitar any of us have ever driven that just needs a tiny little bit of cosmetic love. So if you want a car that's all fun, all motion, all go, just drive it anywhere all day long, this is it. Matching Dunlops, so James has put new tyres on it, it's had a stainless steel fuel tank put in, he's done all of the hard jobs. So he's a little bit of polish, tiny bit of paint, and you'll have a perfect car. And what could be better in none more 70s brown with brown interior it drives mint. Don't be put off by the fact it isn't exterior perfection because mechanically where it matters, where the money should be spent, it really is. That's a great one to bid on. I think that'll be hopefully five and a half, six and a half grand, that kind of car. You can just add a little bit of touch yourself and make it yours and make it perfect. But can't stress enough, the hard work is done for you. Oh, you little minx. There you go, 1965 Hillman Minx Saloon with three former keepers. It's only done 82,000 miles this car. Complete service book, matching set of tyres, period spotlights, the original buff log book for you purists out there. And again, just a really nice car. Lovely, lovely interior. If you've never driven one of these, they are absolutely lovely. They just bowl along and they make a really nice way to travel. And the interior is perfection. It needs absolutely nothing. So if you want an inexpensive British four-seater, four-door motor car, to have some fun this summer at car shows. Again, and just a really nice patinated, I guess, older paintwork looking at it. Looks like it's had a tiny bit of paint a very long time ago. And it's just sat in it. So there you go, we've got a lovely Hillman Minx for you to come and purchase. And we're gonna come on to now two of my favorites. 
Everybody knows how much I love a Volkswagen Beetle. I've always had one since the age of 16. This is a 1969 model, so you're getting very early, later at right headlights, you're getting 86,000 miles. It's had a repaint, it's not an original color for the year, but I think it looks rather nice. It's had a very funky retrim as well. It's an older restoration of Volkscraft, I've seen their stuff before, it's pretty decent. Full photographic repaint. It's going a little bit flat in a couple of places. It looks like it's had some paint on the wing here. You might want to do again, and you might want to put either proper colour-coded bumpers on or just get some inexpensive chrome bumpers to make it perfect. But you've got a lot of photographs of the whole history of this car. And it's going to be, again, a great way of getting into a nice, tidy, usable Beetle without spending loads of money. We've got this one estimated at four and a half to six grand. Again, any nice Beetle now is a minimum of five with a rush-free shell before you start looking at things like paint and interior. And this very funky, sort of Paisley-inspired interior, which is, is very much of its time, but I think it's cool. It's a bit different that, Al, don't you reckon? It's even got the gator done as well. But lovely car, needing very little to make it nice. And again, have fun while you're doing it, that's the thing. You don't need to spend a lot of money now. Just enjoy it, knock the edges off it, and make it yours. Which brings us to this car, this beautiful MGB GT. And that brings us to this car, this rather lovely 1979 MGB GT. What can I tell you about it other than it's probably how you would spec it if you're trying to make the easiest one to sell. So British Racing Green, chrome wires with spinners, front fog lights, beige interior. It's kind of like the car salesman's dream, this one. It's all the right things. Great mileage, 44,000, manual, only four keepers as well. It's got the overdrive, which everybody wants because it makes them a real cruiser. As I said, chrome wires. It's had a lot of work on this, just had Repairs to footwells, it's had the jacking points done, the outriggers, new front calipers and brake pads, and a really nice history file. So if you're looking for a nice MG GT, so you've got the usable boots, they don't leak, it's got a pretty decent heater, and we've estimated this one at just five and a half to seven grand. So I just think that's a really presentable, beautiful car that hasn't got any of the bodywork problems that they normally have. It's got the door capping kit, it's got the wood kit on the dashboard as well. A lovely thing and you might own that for seven grand plus commission so that is the full walk round. i can't really do these cars justice which is why we have our viewing day so do make sure you have a look online where we've got full history files full walkthroughs full book packs and of course you've still got three days to come to the auction and have a look for yourself so i'll be there saturday the 14th of may fuzz will be there and i hope you are too